see it for myself on camera the first time. And I'm going to start. Let me tell you, we've had a lot of experience in life. And for one thing, speaking of experience, it's not even going to matter sometimes. Do you know why that is? It doesn't matter your skill your, or anything you have. Any talents or gifts, sometimes it's not going to get you where you want. Some person who's lucky than you is going to get there before you sometimes. Before you can even get there. Maybe they're just genetically more gifted than you are, or have more skill. Or maybe you're just luckier than you. And people like them better than you do. Here's the point sometimes. You can't change and make people like you, okay? Sometimes people are just gonna hate you, no matter who you are. They're just gonna like somebody else better. Okay, that's lesson one. Got some examples to improve, to prove it. In case you guys didn't know, the person I'm about to show you who's on my couch, his name is Jimmy. Jimmy comes from a poor background. He's been in poverty his whole life, and his parents decided to kick him out of the house when he was 17 years old because they thought he was a man. He's been out on the streets for four months now, and I decided to be nice enough to take him into my house. The reason he can't get a job is due to his lack of education. This is because his family was poor. He only had three years of primary school before his family just couldn't afford it anymore, so he had to drop out. I'm going to show you Jimmy right now. Uh oh, want me to see my experience? Okay, sure. Um, it's not an easy life being where I come from, you know, it's not easy at all, you middle class rich people who don't live in the hood, you should all be grateful, okay, it was not easy growing up, there was, there were tons of crime, and there are lots of moments I'm traumatized from, and uh, it was a poor, it was a really poor, Place and everything was worn out. And let me think what else. Uh, so, me right now, living in this man's house, this is the best time I've had in my life so far. My lack of education made it so that I can't get a job. And now I'm going to have to rely on the owner of this house in order to get a job. Well, hey, on the bright side, I mean, it's fair that our main in poverty are being killed like some other people are in these kinds of scenarios. So I decided to take a walk to the benches in my neighborhood, and there I met a 16-year-old who lost his job for an interesting reason. So, tell me about how you lost your job. This is the you guys know. I mean, don't point out the fact how ironic it is that we're working in the same exact way, okay? It's not important to you. What is important is that I was fired because of my racist and cynical thoughts. So apparently, I've been treated like crap. I've been paid lower than every other member who worked in the place I was in. I worked at a nearby shop where I was. The boss hated Middle Eastern people. And, uh, yeah, I just yelled at all the time. It sucked. Okay, hate it. Now, this example of 17-year-old teenager Lewis, who 
it's half Middle Eastern. His dad comes from Saudi Arabia. He was treated like crap and fired because his boss was racist. What this teaches us, teaches us that no matter how skilled or talented you are, if you have a racist boss, then you're just gonna be mistreated and fired. Racism is a huge problem in America, like it is around the world in every single other country. There is not a single country that's not racist, okay? We're sexist. We simply can't demolish racism or sexism unless we burn down the whole planet. Do we want that? No. I mean, I don't know, some people may. But let's not talk about that now. Racism and sexism affects the lives of many people. Many people who are discriminated or bad luck because of their race and sex. Or either, which they can't help. So that is what I mean by saying expectation and skills don't matter sometimes. Because there are racist and sexist people out there willing to make things hard for you. So, here's my point. If you're a white straight male, unfortunately, you have it better than the rest of them. So, this 18 year old kid saw me recording people and then he asked me what I was doing. And so when I told him, he offered to be in my video to share a story about his school experience. So, uh, my school, I'm the good kid, but I end up being the outcast. I'm one of the only kids in the school without a girlfriend, and I probably am the lowest ranking, if not one of the lowest ranking, of all the students in the school. My impulse is also very high, and so that tends to cause problems because I end up breaking things all the time out of impulsive actions and then my parents constantly yell at me and get angry with me for it and I keep getting punished it really sucks I mean I also used to go to a school in which even the teachers didn't like me and they used to treat me like garbage my days are constantly interrupted with the bad memories of being treated like garbage and insulted. By the way, I'm insulted a lot. People hate me for the stupidest reasons, and then they treat me like garbage and just don't leave me alone, ever. I mean, it makes school days hard and miserable. And just to see all these bad kids, just getting all these friends, and doing better, getting more praise than I am, it's frustrating. I mean, it's like all the bad kids who are jerks, who don't listen to anyone. They just have a great in life, everyone likes them and they have a good job. But then you're the good kid, you don't really have a good job. People don't like you, but maybe you do have a good job, but people still don't like you either way. And then even there's other nice kids in the school who are being praised and being called nice. And meanwhile, people are just hating on me. It's, it's frustrating to deal with. I mean, sometimes I feel like God hates me and doesn't want me in this world. It's like even, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's all I have to say. Besides people think, um, people mention how I'm impulsive and frustrated. They also mention how I say sorry a lot. Right, and that's, I'm gonna end it there, right? This next clip I'm about to show you is interesting, but the main thing you guys should focus on, if any of you are even watching this, is the bad message that's inserted in this clip. can't handle the truth because you're too cowardly and stubborn. 
nobody ever listens to a bad guy. And your last words. Well, I guess this is the end. Such a fool. Oh, I thought I could beat you. What? How did you get back here? I thought I killed you earlier. Benny, is that you? I thought you... No. I was resurrected by God. Now it's time for you to die once and for all. Impossible! This isn't happening! No! No! Please! Please, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Lucy! Lucy! So, I guess um, I could see some different opinions on anyone who's watching this, if there is, or maybe not. Some of you may think this is cringy, or funny, or weird. We're all, or neither. It doesn't matter. The bad message this is conveying to kids is that people are going to be resurrected, but that people aren't actually dead. Do you know why? Because if, because if kids lose someone they love, if they lose a friend or something like that, they're gonna actually believe that they can be resurrected, or that they're not actually dead. I mean, everyone's gonna have to deal with loss, even the loss of themselves. I mean, it doesn't matter if someone doesn't deal with the loss of their friends, they're gonna have to deal with the loss of themselves eventually at some point. The point is, this is not conveying a good message. At some point, these kids are going to learn the truth. So then when they do learn the truth, it's going to make them feel even worse. Because not only are they going to have to deal with the pain about the truth of loss, but now they're going to be even more frustrated because they were false hoped by this moral. So filmmakers who are making these, please stop with that trope if you are still using it. It's not good for people. It sends off a bad message. So, I'm gonna end this right here. I mean, many of you guys might have not liked it if anyone's watching. Because maybe you thought it was boring. And I'll admit it probably is boring, okay? But I mean, all that matters is that you've learned some lessons. And if you didn't, then at least you know. At least you met another person who can accept the harsh realities of the world. And either way, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna have to edit this, and that's a pain. Just like filmmaking is in real life, it's a pain. There's budget problems and other factors like that. Either, either way, this is just a silly little film I have to show to my film teacher. So I mean, it's the end right now. Mm -hmm.